I'm here to save you some money, but more importantly, I'm here to save you time in your dog training. There are a lot of products out there that are cleverly marketed as quick fix solutions for common problems that you might have with your dog. And we want to make sure that you understand that there are very rarely good quick fixes in dog training. We want to make sure today that you start off on the right track with your dog. If you live in an apartment or a condo, you may have a good use for pee pads. The last thing anybody wants to do is truck down several floors out of an apartment at 3 a.m. to take their puppy out to go to the bathroom. If you do resort to using pee pads, we strongly encourage you to treat them like they're outdoor spaces. Don't just leave them down and let your puppy come and go to use them. Actually take your puppy on leash, bring them with you to the pee pad, and then give them an opportunity to go. And that'll help you transition later on down the road to getting outside with your puppy to help them go. Now, if you're in any other situation than in an apartment or a condo or you don't have access to outdoor space, you want to ditch these completely. If you have a house with a yard or if you have green space outside in any way, shape or form, you are so much better off to not use pee pads and not give your puppy a reason to think that going inside the house is an okay thing to do. So pee pads, for the most part, get rid of them. They'll make your house training much harder in the long term. There is no quick fix out there that is going to be good for replacing thorough training efforts. Things like this pet deterrent that requires you to have it in your hand anytime your dog does something that you don't like and requires you to be in a position where you can scare them with a little bit of a noise. It's really not going to help you because eventually your dog's going to do something you don't like when you don't have this in your hand. So you're much better off and it's also much more fair to your dog to spend time teaching them what you'd like them to do and teaching them the rules of the house rather than trying to turn around and rely on things that will promise you a quick fix but really won't deliver anything long term. Another option for quick fix dog training are sprays like this which are taste deterrent sprays and unless I wanted to buy gallons and gallons of this and coat my entire house in it I might as well just forget about this to begin with. This might have a purpose if your dog has a one little specific spot in the house that they just really show interest in for some reason. Something like a taste deterrent spray might work for that. Or if your dog has things like hot spots or areas that they tend to chew on their body, sometimes a taste deterrent spray can be really helpful in those situations. But in terms of helping your dog learn what they can chew and what they can't chew in your house, this is going to be useless. When we were shopping today, we actually saw two people in the store using one of these leashes. As a professional dog trainer, it makes zero sense to me to use a leash like this because by the time I've gathered up a little bit of that leash to try to work with it to give my puppy or my young dog information, I've got chain wrapped around my thumb, which doesn't feel very good at all. And it's really hard to manipulate with my young dog. So this is definitely something that is out of the equation. A good leash is going to be one of the most important training tools that you ever purchase for your dog. And something like this, it's kind of pretty. It's got this clever little jewel on it. It's got nice colors. However, in terms of a training leash, this is pretty much useless. It's not going to give me any sort of ability to control or to work with my dog. I need to make sure that I have something that is manageable, that's easy for me to use my hands on, that's easy for me to move around with. And unfortunately, something that's big and clunky like this is just going to cause me trouble. I can also predict that over a very short period of time, especially if I have a young puppy that's in training and they might grab at the leash a little bit with their teeth very quickly, this sort of material is going to end up fraying and starting to pull apart and might become a danger for my dog. This next leash is a little bit of a variation on a popular leash. Retractable leashes are something that have their space and their purpose, but not with a young dog in training and definitely not with a puppy. And this variation actually has an added danger of locking up without you necessarily telling it to lock up. So if you're enjoying a walk with your dog and not paying attention and they suddenly decide that they are going to chase something and take off after it, that locking mechanism is gonna take you quite by surprise and could do damage to both you and your dog. Definitely a no. You probably wanna know what the solution is. Well, let's start by getting rid of these. 
and we'll talk about what you should be using. It's really simple. You want to have a six foot leather leash. One of the reasons that we really prefer leather over nylon or any of those other materials is that leather doesn't have the same tendency to burn as some of those materials do. So you can have a good grip with your dog, but it's still soft enough that you can have a good connection from your hand down to your dog's collar with a little bit of stretch in that leash. It's hard to think of things that are more fun to buy for our dogs than toys, but the wrong toy can actually set you back in your training and it can even be downright dangerous for your dog. Things like these, this is really cute. However, when it comes to giving something to my dog, there's so many dangers present here that I would never allow my dog to just sit down and chew on this. Or the intention, of course, is to have them pull out all of these smaller toys, which become a choking hazard and could become a blockage hazard. In addition to that, this toy is just big and awkward and bulky. So it doesn't have good application in terms of playing tug or even retrieving with my dog. There are really only two types of toys that you need to concern yourselves with for your young dogs or your new puppies. One type is something that you feel safe leaving your dog alone with as a chew toy. And there's very, very few toys that you would actually want to leave solo with your dog. Some of the things that typically make the list for us are Kongs or nylon bones, but everything comes with a little bit of a warning because some dogs won't be safe with either of these chew toys when left alone. So make sure that you spend some time watching your dogs and their chewing habits before you make any decisions about leaving them solo with something that might cause them harm. The other type of toy that you'll want is something that you can play tug with. It's what we call an interactive toy. And something that you can teach your dog to retrieve with is gonna be really helpful for your training as well. Having the engagement activity of tugging and playing is really gonna help your dog wanna bring that toy back to you. And something like this is purpose built to have you be able to put a little bit of food or something enticing inside of it so that your dog is eager to wanna chase it and then eager to wanna bring it back so you can take that food out and deliver it to them. There may be a time in your dog's life where you decide to go to a harness over a collar. And that's okay once you have a dog who is responsive to your voice and who really understands the rules and where they should be in their training. Until then, things like harnesses should really take a back seat. The reason for that is that they'll actually give your dogs all sorts of reason to be able to pull you harder. And unfortunately, they're also not the best for giving your dog good, quick, timely information. So that's going to set you back. I want to talk a little bit more about harnesses though, because there are varieties of harnesses out there on the market called no-pull harnesses. And these are things that are potentially unsafe for your dogs. Do some research and some reading before you go with anything like this, because there's a lot of evidence out there in the world that talks about how damaging these can be to your dogs and to your dog's structure over time. A flat collar is the thing that you're gonna use with your puppy or your young dog in training. Get rid of the harnesses. Now that you know some of the tools to avoid, you want to make sure that you avoid the biggest mistakes that new puppy owners make. And on that note, I'm Instructor Shannon. Happy training.